So thanks for joining me tonight. I thought I would uh, demonstrate how to paint a variegated wash and really how that relates because you would have seen me do that in a lot of landscape demonstrates or demonstrations already but um, we're kind of looking at that in the context of a, a sky and landscapes and also kind of how does the, how do the brushes function so so I'm just using Archer's watercolor medium uh, 300 GSM 100% cotton uh, cold pressed paper for this demonstration I've just wet the whole page uh, and then just using my round sable uh, I'm just going to bring in a bit of color so I'll just bring in a little bit of um, yellow ochre for a sky you know just some sort of beginnings of a sky uh, and then I'll wash that brush out so that was yellow ochre. I'll just bring that in so you can kind of see that. So that was the yellow ochre. Uh, and, and then I might just bring in a little bit of, bit of cobalt blue. And so variegation is just where you're just putting colors next to other colors and then they start to also uh, merge together on the edges. So you can start to see that. We might even get a little bit of, let's get a little bit of, a um, little bit of raw umber here. We'll just bring that in. And then we'll just bring in that favorite mix of mine of uh, uh, cobalt blue and light red. And this time we're going to charge areas. So charging is where you just bring it in over the top of those areas. And then obviously, if you just put it in once and then put it over the top, it'll mix gradually via diffusion and things. But of course, if you start to lift back and forth, back and forth on the page, you'll be disturbing the layer underneath. And then you, therefore you'll get more of this cobalt blue light red mix here. Whereas if you just do one layer, it'll mingle with that yellow ochre. And same here. If I just go once over the top, it'll start to mingle beautifully with that. So it just it depends what effect you want. And what I also wanted to show you with a sable is I've just I've just filled up this sable here um, full of water. So it's plump and full of water. In fact, if I held a tip down, it would probably drip. So it's almost uh, see it just dripped then. So it's very very full, and I just want you to see what happens. Water and paint is always moving pretty much either out of the brush or onto the brush. So if I just put that down there now, obviously water will come out of the brush onto the paper. So of course, if you want that, that's fine to do that. And you can start to see the water expanding out and disturbing the pigment that way. So if you start to get those effects on your watercolor and you don't want it, it means that sometimes you're putting down a wash you're either applying just pure water like I've done just there or you're applying a wash that is way too weak and so it's almost like just adding water so of course you can you can fix those marks up but now you see I've got rid of all the water out of the brush and so this now will soak it up so can you see that it's just taken that straight off the page so if I don't want it to take that up like that, especially a sable, which is beautiful at taking uh, paint or water, pigment up off the page and laying it down. If I don't want it to do that, then I'm going to need to get a bit of a mix. So I might just get a, mi a bit of a mix of this yellow ochre uh, and mix that. And then if I start to bring that in then, then I can start to blend that together. And again, if I get if I rinse that out a bit and it's a little bit weaker now, I've just got to make sure it's not too much water on there. And then I can just start to blend that again. So painting in watercolor is about getting to know, I suppose, these sort of laws of nature of how what happens on the page. Because it's, it's not a mystery. It shouldn't be a mystery. After a while, you should get to know what is happening there. And so water is and it's always just gradually drying and evaporating. And you can see when it's really wet and you can see when the page is more dry. And what will happen is 
that if you've got a really wet page, like let's say I wet this really thoroughly down here, okay? I wet this thoroughly down here. If I bring in some pigment now, like this, and I bring it in like this, then it is pushed water away this way. And then if I come in this way, uh, let's just come in with a different color, come in with some cobalt blue. If I come this way, a bit more pigment, see not enough pigment then. If I come in with the pigment this way, then it'll push the water that way a bit. It's, it's less obvious on a very small scale if you are if you're painting a much larger landscape, you can really see where the big brush marks that you've made have put in pigment, but also if there was water on that page, it's then pushed it away. So it's just really great to get to know uh, watercolor and what it can do for you. Because once you understand it, it's, it's a beautiful medium. And some watercolors diffuse more than others. And you just get to know that, how they behave. So I suppose this isn't exactly a specific landscape, but, but it's just, uh, I suppose, so this is now dry, very dry brush, very little water in it. So I'm almost just like, picking up pigment and then moving it somewhere else a bit. Which is all good, whereas if I wanted to softly move the paint around, I'd have to get the brush the right damp, like not full of water, because that'll just make it explode, but also not completely dried on a tissue. So you'd want the right amount of water on the brush to just move that paint across the page, not so you don't have water flooding on, but you're also not lifting it up off the page. And that takes a bit of getting used to. And all the time you can pick up pigment from here and then put it down over here. So you can be doing lots of things with the brush. And I suppose I don't always talk about those things because I'm just kind of doing them. But it is important for you guys painting in watercolor to, to understand those things. Because that is what creates uh, a bit of a harmony between the medium and the painter and uh, and ends up enabling you to paint lovely lovely landscapes and really really enjoy yourself rather than being scared or frightened or just being ir irritated by not feeling like you understand it or in control and it's not you know, the way I paint I'm not always in control but what I do understand is the medium and how it works on the paper So uh, thanks for joining me. This is a very short video, I know, on how to paint a variegated wash, but also just how and all the brushes work in the same way. They're either picking up pigment or water or laying down uh, pigment or water. And some of them do, do it in a much better way than, than others or in just in a different way, I suppose. Like the flat nylon I use, it's a firmer brush. So if I wanted to lift out a light, especially on this Archer's style paper, which is, has more sizing, after I've dried this, this is a beautiful brush for lifting out lights because it's a bit firmer, which just means it can just disrupt the pigment that's sitting on top of the paper, it can disrupt it, and then I wipe it out, uh, and then that's a good brush for that. So it's just getting to know your brushes. I'll just quickly dry this and show you that. So I just wanted to show you guys uh, lifting out a light with, with the flat nylon. And again, the same applies. If I take put that into clean, fresh water, it's now very full of water. I would never try and lift out a light with it really full like this, but I'll just show you what might happen if you did that. So if I go to brush this on here, uh, a, a lot of water will just come out of it. And I, I suppose I could, but most of the time when I'm lifting out lights, I want to have a little bit more control than that. So a fair bit of water comes onto the page and if I go to wipe that out now you can see that it lifts it out but it's, it's kind of flooded onto the page. I would normally uh, wipe it on the side of the, the jar and then I would also get rid of a little bit 
and just make sure I've got a nice fine tip. And so that way then, I, if I'm lifting out a light, I can just, it's still fairly wet, but I've just got a little bit more control and I could even have it even less moist than that. So a fairly And so you can lift that out. So this is a beautiful brush for, for doing that. Uh, so you could either put water on the page and let it sit, and the longer you let it sit, the more likely you are to lift out a whiter white. It has time to mingle with the pigment underneath and to start to dampen it, which means it's more likely to get lifted off. And so that's why you know, if you, if you, the other way of also getting paint off the page is to work it a bit. But if you work it too hard with the brush, you might end up working it into the page. It depends how much sizing is on there and how many times you've done that, whether you've disrupted the surface of the paper. But uh, you can use the brush to just work a bit, work it, work it, work it, uh, to, to get it to, to take the, the pigment off. Anyway, I'm just demonstrating some things. So the other thing is, if you went to tr keep trying to do that lifting out of lights, you now would want to dry this because a wet uh, page and then you working at it hard with a flat nylon is more likely to then push it into the page. If that's what you want, that's fine. But uh, So again, if you're lifting out lights and doing this sort of thing, after you've done a bit, you dry it all again and then start again if you want to do that. I also, of course, have this 3M Magic removable tape that I use. And of course, you can use it in a few ways. You could use it to lift out a light. So I'll just do that like right here. Let's pretend that's a lake. So I put that tape down there like that. Push it down really hard. Get my flat nylon, take a fair bit of the water out. Because if I put too much water down there, it's likely to seep it up underneath the... Um, the, the, the tape even though I've pressed that down hard so I don't want too much on there and then I just run that right up against the uh, the tape so I can just go on the tape and just off the tape and then I can get a tissue and just wipe it off there wipe it off there and then I can take the tape off and it's a way of creating beautiful white lines that have a very sharp edge that you just wouldn't be able to do without using the tape the other way of using the tape is to put it down where you might want horizon. So again, you press it down on the side that you want. And actually, I probably should have dried this because just under here, the paper's still a bit damp. We'll see how that goes. But I probably should have dried this because again, the, the paper will stick much better onto dried uh, paper. So let's say I want to darken that horizon a bit. Uh, get my round sable and I can just bring that in almost like a, a, a dry brush along the top there and this is a, I suppose a good demonstration of dry brushing too which is where it just hits the tops of the paper the rougher the paper the more undulating you're going to the more you're going to get that lovely textured sort of marks I suppose so um dry brushing is a lovely um, thing to do at the end to just get so you can see there just create some beautiful uh, textures and things and then you could you could come along with a damp brush if you want to just soften some of those edges and then take that tape off You can you can see then with with very um, 
simple painting processes, but understanding all the time why you're doing certain actions. You can just start to create landscapes just out of your, you know, um, imagination or from, from, from photos that you've taken. And this is a really lovely size to work on because you can just do one and then do another one, do another one. You could even paint on the other side when it's dry and not waste too much paper. And it's, it's really lovely. And you might not be using a brush like this except to wet it, but you might not be painting with that, but that's fine. You know, you still paint with a hate brush. You could still paint with a one or two inch hate brush and the flat nylon and the round sable. Not a lot really needs to, not a lot really needs to, to change really. And you're much more likely to get nice big brush marks because it's a small uh, piece of paper. So thanks for joining me on how to paint uh, a variegated wash and I suppose quite a few other things in there too. I hope that was helpful. I know I've demonstrated pretty much everything on here before, but I, I suppose what I don't do all the time is, is talk about it in that level of detail. And I think it's good to see some of these things like here, you can see the uh, burnt umber pushing in. It was a it was a weaker, water, more watery wash and it's pushed into the cobalt blue that you can see the fingers in there. You can also see the cobalt blue that I did the variegated wash here right next to the yellow ochre and it started to, to mingle and sort of bleed in along there. So you can just see some of those processes occurring on here. You can see when I did the um, cobalt blue in the mix here, it's then bled up here. And sometimes you get bleeding along tape lines because that's where water sometimes pools or accumulates. So sometimes you get bleeding going up and it's just good to know about that. Either if you don't like that, you manage your water on the page or you end up getting it, fra you, you plan for that and you get it framed so that it comes in a bit. So, so cool, I hope you um, found that helpful and um, let me know if you've got any questions and thanks very much for tuning in tonight and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Good night.